Andrew, since you were tardy to class today, how about you take the intro? Absolutely. Welcome to the official podcast, the one that I've been prepared for all my life. I've been waiting. I've been prepping. I've got my notes here. I've got my times, my calendars, my dates, my sheets, my messages, my inbox, my outbox, my invoices, and my updogs. And they're all dedicated to this podcast. Joining me is Jackson, Kaya, Charlie, and a Mr. Sloss. I want to say Mr. Sloss because I feel like that sounds like a like a Marvel Comics villain that time forgot. You know what I mean? You want to introduce yourself to the... Uh... Absolutely take that. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you uh, tell the folks at home what you do, Mr. Sloss? Um, I steal from the poor and I give to the rich. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, just like a reverse Robin Hood. I think the poor have had it too good for too long. It's about <laughs> damn time. Really? <laughs> Those goddamn poor, man. Yeah, I'm a comedian, depending on who you ask. <laughs> well, okay. I'm asking you, are you comedy or post-comedy? Ooh. The fuck is post-comedy? Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Jesus. It's this shit that some comics who have no talent or skill to make the audience laugh have come up with, where apparently now, according to them, we've moved post-comedy. It's like postmodern arts where comedy isn't really about making people laugh. That's it. That's post comedy's description. Well, I mean, I mean, comedy, it's comedy. The literal definition of it is to make people laugh. I'm not yeah. sure. Can add that's, more to it. That's why they've made it their new definition. Now yeah. it's now in 2018. That, something. that definition makes you a racist and a bigot and a whatever, everything, every ist. That's it. It's a, God, I just, I hate this so much. I have a chip on my shoulder about this. I'm so sorry. Let, finish introducing <laughs> yourself. <laughs> oh, am I introducing myself still? I'm, I'm, I'm Tanya Sloss and I'm a comedian. All right, you can, you can go back to your firing rage now, Kai, about post-comedy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, there was this article that I, here. <laughs> Jesus. Eight signs. I'm sorry. I, I'm just, I'm so fucking sorry, but this has to be done since we have an actual comedian on. Eight signs you're watching a post-comedy comedy. This is from vulture.com. So it's not like this isn't some random woman's Tumblr block. Okay. <laughs> Sign one, a confused, ambiguous protagonist. You go, okay, that could be something. Wait, 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 yeah, wait, wait, hang on. I, I got to stop you on the first mm-hmm. one. What is an ambiguous protagonist? What is, what does that even mean? Knows. Do you have a perspective on that one, Daniel? As someone in the business, would you consider yourself an ambiguous protagonist of the comedy field, perhaps? I'm not even sure I know what both of those words mean. <laughs> What's a protagonist? Well, protagonist is obviously somebody that, you know, antagonizes people. Ambiguous. Oh, I mean, I, I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea. But that the whole fucking phrase confuses me. Yeah, it's almost like a... It's almost like it's designed to be wishy-washy and, you know, undefinable. But just sounds like a journalist discovered a thesaurus and was just like, well, this sounds intellectual. <laughs> sounds like they had a deadline to meet about articles to write. So they went, uh, I got one, got one coming right now, boss. It's about uh, post-comedy. Yeah, you'll, you'll love it. No, no, let's go down the list. You'll, you guys will understand. You're not bigots. You're progressive here. The Grim Plot Movers. That's what I go to a comedy for is Grim Plot Movers. <laughs> the next item what? is real human bodies often in pain. Mm. Hmm. Pain and agony is what I go to see a comedy for. The hangover, pain. Real human bodies in pain. Self-referentiality is your th- thesaurus, Daniel. Yeah. The next item. Anybody care to take a guess? It is. Literal darkness. <laughs> that's the title at all. <laughs> the, the, the concept of darkness. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck literal darkness is supposed to mean. Well, it just sounds like they've got no fucking lights. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, can really, afford yeah. lights. It's to, no make up, oh, here's a good one. it's to make up hey. for a shitty budget. Yeah. You know what says humor to me, boys? Existential dread. Oh, I no. oh, yeah. I add that in. That's beautiful. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing's funnier to me than than just crying in a dark room alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's God, beautiful. Fuck this. Okay, Sloss, tell us about real comedy, not this, not this fucking sad shit. 
Um, depends. Obviously, comedy comes in. Well, first of all, comedy is subjective. It said to people who aren't good at comedy. Um, <laughs> it's, I don't know. Like, for me, comedy is just fucking what makes you laugh. I personally have pref- always sort of preferred the comedy where, um, you know, intellectual uh, and challenging hit points. You know, I like the shows where you fucking leave them. And even if your opinions <clears> haven't <throat> been changed, you think about it a while afterwards. And that's not to negate how funny you know, and how good just actually funny straight stand-up is. Um, but for me, I've always preferred this stuff where you sort of leave and you're able to have a, you know, you've laughed a whole bunch, but then you also get to fucking discuss it a bit. Mm. The one that leaves an impact, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you look at stuff, uh, you know, Jim Jeffries, uh, Bill Burr, um... <laughs> Uh, Tignataro, Bo Burnham. I, you know, I, I've got a wide spectrum of what I fucking enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just fucking, you know, as long as, look, as long as the audience is fucking laughing, you've got time to make them think. All right, here's a litmus test for you, and I don't know if your manager was in the room uh, doing <laughs> these. All right. How do you feel about Hannah Gadsby and Nanette on Netflix? I thought it was a fucking very powerful show. Yeah, mm. powerful can mean many things. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, I think uh, <laughs> I've, I've gigged with Hannah over the years. I think she's a very, very good comic. And I think that was, you know, it, I enjoyed the show because it made people uncomfortable. And I enjoy shows that make people uncomfortable. Yeah, I like I the fact that she didn't fucking it. throw the life raft out when everyone was drowning in the silence. You know, take stones. I mean, she didn't have to. The editors edited in plenty of sitcom laughter for her. When you have laughter that just starts abruptly and then dies down within two seconds, it's mm-hmm. edited. It's sitcom laughter. The uh, the best way to tell is if you hear the yeah. same uh, specific laughter through different episodes. Like uh, Big Bang Theory had a certain laugh track that they used over and over again. And you could easily pick it out because some guy in the background was going, <laughs> and there's like a whole YouTube compilation of it. But uh, they do it all the time. They reuse the same stock laugh tracks. Why are you so good at it? Because <laughs> I fly. clearly listen to it a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I, I warm myself up on it while I watch it. Every time. That's where he gets his material from. Yeah. I, I, I just sit in front of the mirror and just go, bazinga, and I do it until it's right. And then when it's right, I finally play the laugh track for myself. <laughs> Write down the jokes. <laughs> that kind of brings me to a topic, though, Daniel. Since we were talking about post-comedy and Kai has cleared his stain for it as well, is there anything in the comedy field that you find yourself really apprehensive about, uh, about that's something that you don't particularly enjoy being in the industry? Um, in the industry, uh, I mean, bits and pieces. Like, by and large, most comedians are actually very fucking nice people and mm-hmm. funny as fuck. Uh, I occasionally get annoyed by sort of fucking full humble shit. Like, you know... Uh, just people being like, oh, you know, just just comics. They just they go on stage and they're like, oh, you know, I'm you know I'm nervous or you know I'm a sort of beta person. And it's like, no, you're not. You're not beta. No comedian is beta. You're standing on stage in front of a fucking room full of people and everyone is listening. That's you know to me that's fucking baller. Don't sit there and be like, you know. I just think it's a way of getting sympathy that you don't need. Like if you need sympathy to get laughs, then. Maybe you shouldn't mm. be a fucking comedian. Wait, are, are, are you talking about the people that go on stage and complain about their lives and act like they're less human? No, no, no. I, I, I love that. But, you know, there's, a, there's certain types of comedy that go on stage and they're just like, oh, I'm so socially awkward. I don't know what to do. And, you know, I get nervous all the time. And I'm like, well, you can't be, and this might be ignorant, but, you know, you can't be that nervous. You're on stage with a fucking microphone in front of a bunch of strangers and you seem to be holding your own. It just mm. seems... A, way of sort of, I don't know, people have a disposition they don't want to fucking admit they're good at what they do and I don't understand why I, I, and not only that, not only they won't admit they're good, whenever you go along and you just go, yeah, I'm very fucking good at my job they're like, that's arrogant, I'm, no, no, it's based on fact, so, so in most of my fucking gigs, it's an evidence based opinion. So what you're uh, <laughs> saying is you hate both humbleness and talent <laughs> Yeah, yeah, as I've always said I'll be, I'll be humble when I suck 
I've met many, many comedians who are like, I'm quite humble. And I was like, look, if I had your material, I'd be fucking humble too. But I don't, so I'm not going to be. Ooh. Ooh. Would you, like, <laughs> would, you, yeah, would you like to call someone out right now? Absolutely not. Uh, probably, no. probably smart <laughs> move, Fuck. I guess. I assume that means Bill Burr. Bill, if you want to defend yourself, you're free to come on the show. <laughs> it's the yeah, fuck you, Bill Burr. It's the only way, Bill. That, that, that famous beta male, Bill Burr. <laughs> His words, not ours, Bill. Come defend yourself. Yeah. yeah. Now, we're not saying Daniel Sloss is directly calling out that pussy Bill Burr, but, uh, M- Mr. Sloss, if you could just quote what I said there, that'd be great. Oh, well, what I was saying, absolutely not. You can shove your bite-sized clips up your ass. <laughs> He All understands right, well, using that. He understands how the game's played. Yeah. Oh, that's, your, that's your fucking little clickbait article, is it? Yeah. yeah. It'll be on Vulture very soon about post podcasting. <laughs> post podcasting. <laughs> it's oh, kind of big wish. I, oh, I was just gonna go ahead. I was just gonna steer this a little more towards the internet stuff now because uh YouTube comedians, if you can call many of them that what? Like the vloggers and stuff. What are you That's as, a thing? Well, I mean, that's what they consider themselves, like the Logan Pauls and stuff. They're comedian, entertainer, vloggers, etc. <laughs> well, they, they also consider themselves dancers and yeah, yeah. like no, entrepreneurs. Well, they are entrepreneurs. That's they're the only one that's comedians really comedians at all. They're people who are like, look at my cool life, ha ha ha. They're they're fake friends. I mean, that's a, yeah. Into a lot of children, that's comedy. So I was hoping for a professional comedian's perspective on it. Do you keep up with any of the internet realms? Uh, champion comedians such as the Pauls and the other big guys on the YouTube space? No, I hang out with real comedians. Okay. I, I, hang, out, I, I hang out with comedians that cut their teeth in the trenches. Like, you know, and that's not necessarily say I, I know many. I mean, a, a good example is Bull Barnum's technically a YouTube comedian, and I would fucking rate him very, very, very high up in actual comedians, but that's because he went from uh, YouTube, he actually did clubs, you know, he fucking, he, he graphs, he works. Um, so like if uh, any if any YouTube comic turns up in a fucking comedy club, I've got no problem with them. But I, what I do find weird is if you know they go off tours based off their success. But then again, they're just trying to make fucking cash. Uh, I w- won't respect them. But I imagine when you're making that much money, you couldn't give a fuck about my respect. So you have more of a respect for someone that goes for a traditional route as well as starting on the internet space. So going from like stand up on YouTube to doing it in person is where you start to really acknowledge them as a comic. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because as long as you've sort of done it, like if you know, if you, if you, Bull Burnham. The reason Bull Burnham sells out is because Bull Burnham is a very, very good comedian. He's proven that in the clubs and the theaters that he plays all around. Uh, people go and see him because they've seen him live or they've seen him on YouTube performing live, and he's very, very good at that. Whereas if you've just seen someone be funny in a fucking video and they're able to, you know, sell out a room based on that, um, then you know, I guess it's your fucking money. But I, I don't consider you a comedian. Is that typically the attitude of most comedians that you've come to know? I, I don't imagine you all stand up, stand in a circle like jerk off and talk about YouTube comedians and your take on them or anything, but just being around them, is that kind of the impression you get as well from them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a little bit. Even comedians who I'm not that big, you know, if, I, if I'm not into their comedy and I'm not a big fan of their stuff, I still have respect for them because, you know, they fucking get up on stage and they risk bombing and they risk eating shit and they risk getting heckled and then you know they do the long drives and they you know toil over their materials even if i don't like their stuff i'm like yeah you know what you're still a fucking comedian and i'm never going to deny you that title um but if you're just someone who's like oh i'm a comedian it's like you don't get to decide when you're a comedian your fucking bank gets to decide when you're a comedian (laughs) you have to go through struggle to be considered a comedian poverty yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. daniel would you would you box Logan or <laughs> whatever the he- other guy's name is <laughs> yeah. for the title of a comedian? Is that when you get to decide? Would I box them? No. Would I fucking stand beside them on stage and have a joke up? You bet your ass. Okay, well, everybody you- would do that, yeah. but would you kick their faces in? That's what I'm asking. I get the shit kicked out of me. I'm not a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Daniel's a lover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I cry during both. <laughs> <laughs> so Daniel, you yourself as a human, as a comedian, were on Conan. Is yeah. there uh there any behind the scenes or cool things you uh <laughs> want to tell us? And and please specifically limit it to about Conan because I I admire Conan and I I'd, I'd like to hear about. I'm asking how was Conan? 
He's good. <laughs> Great. No, I'm, I'm just messing around. But yeah, you were on uh, Conan. I'm wondering if there's any behind the scenes stories you could tell us about that. I've met I've met Conan on eight occasions, and those eight occasions, oh, nine occasions. Those nine occasions are like after I've gone up and done my fucking stand up set, and he comes over at the end of the episode and sort of congratulates you, and then asks for the credits to start rolling. Those are the nine times I've met him, which is really frustrating because he's a man that gave me, you know, a really big break in America and has supported me, you know, for four years. And every time he comes up to say, "Oh, thanks for coming on the show," I always want to be like. You gave me a career. Thank you so much. But then he's, you know, he's a busy man. He films like five episodes a week. He does VTs on the weekend. Like he, you know, he's got so many guests. I don't know. I've just, I've never had the chance to thank Conan for changing my life. And it's, you know, a little bit frustrating, but I'm not going to be like, no, I love you so much. Well, <laughs> Daniel, we have a surprise for you. Oh my God. He's in my room. We, we are <laughs> going to connect someone to Skype right now. I think you might recognize him. It's, Jimmy Kimmel. It's the four of the official boys from the official podcast. We're already in. What a pleasure. surprise. And we're and it here cost to tell you, 50 you bucks. <laughs> that you owe us money. Yes. <laughs> that, that's a little fun tidbit of trivia for all the podcast lore enthusiasts. Daniel Sloss, the, he didn't have a microphone. Can you believe that shit? So he went out and bought a microphone just for this podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> it was the cutest shit, man. A big, a big thank you for going out of your way for that. Yeah, no worries. It was just like I got a new laptop, and like I, all laptops have fucking microphones on them nowadays. And I was like, well, that one not work. And then you guys, being the fucking divas you are, we're like, no. <laughs> so being the selfless man that I am, I walked thirty feet to the Best Buy, and I slaved and I toiled, and I brought it back. I'm very selfless. Oh, who told you the laptop microphone? Wait, wait, I don't. My fucking PR said I needed to go out and buy this microphone. <laughs> Is that not? Oh, well, that's all. That's on him. I thought we thought you just did it out of the goodness of your heart. What are you? What motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> laptop. I'm using a laptop microphone right now. Oh, you bag of shit. Well, I'm glad I kept the fucking receipt. <laughs> it could still come yeah. in handy if you want to start like a YouTube stand-up career, maybe like a Minecraft <laughs> Let's Play series. I wouldn't. Yeah. I'll just do it while I'm playing Fortnite, and I'll call out Logan Paul for no reason. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that'll that'll get you the viewers. Don't worry, they love what, it. That's what they need. We need more boxing out yeah. there. No, I think we need more people calling out Logan Paul because no one ever does that. Like, it, <laughs> who's it, brave No enough? one has ever done that. Really, it's such a he's such a titan of the industry. No one's ever once said a bad thing about him online. Why would you? He's so respected. Yeah, that dead that dead episode was real. Mm, just high quality journalism. I think that's, here's the thing, and you you guys can challenge me on this, and I think a lot of it agrees. I don't know a single <laughs> fucking thing in any capacity that Logan Paul has even done except the corpse and the boxing match. That's it. Can, can, like, is, am I alone in this? I feel he, like that's a vast majority of people. I, I saw one thing he did before the, uh, well, I, I guess it was before the boxing match, but after he'd filmed the dead man. He, like, like, so, you, so what you're saying is you're a lifelong fan. Yeah, yes. I've, I've been a strong supporter of the Maverick fam, the Lit Squad. He did like oh, a, you even know the name of his fucking audience. Ooh, no, they're, he, I, he had they're, to subscribe to it. No, Ooh. Jesus, they're not. That's not their names, you goddamn Philistines. Oh, it's, then what are their names, Mister Know It All, Mister Logan Paul's number one fan? It's the Low <laughs> Gang. No, no, oh. I, think they're, I think they're called Paul Bears. All right, Wait, that's that pretty it? good. Jesus I Christ. like that. No, I like that. <laughs> I wish they would <laughs> call themselves true. that. Yeah, because they're carrying his corpse of a career. But anyway, continue, Charlie. <laughs> he did like a skydiving thing where he did it naked or something. I know he did that once. So I know one extra thing he's done. One video you saw. <laughs> <laughs> I went out of my way. It said naked Logan Paul. I couldn't resist. Lay naked <laughs> Logan Paul. Reddit made it. Oh, I don't remember what it, I just saw Logan Paul and naked and I got all hot and bothered and had to immediately click and smash that like button for the low gang. <laughs> Represent. Fuck yeah. What about, what about the other boys and, uh, Mr. Mr. Sloss? Do you guys know of anything that he or his brother have done besides those two things? Was he, was he vine? Was he, was he vine? Is that where he started? I, I'm pretty I sure. No, I have no idea. I'm pretty sure they started on Vine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they started on Vine. Well, actually, just a little history lesson here. Both of them were Disney stars beforehand, I'm pretty sure. And by Disney stars, I mean they were in, like, two episodes of one TV show on the Disney Channel. 
So that's where they got their official start. And then they mm. moved on to oh. Vine and captured the hearts of millions across the globe. Mm. You know, you know. to be fair, that already makes them far more successful than I'll probably ever be. So, uh, fair enough. I mean, that's not true. No, but there was no doubt about it, really. <laughs> okay, successful is the wrong word. I meant like, I don't know. They uh, starting as a Disney Disney star is more <laughs> respectful. <laughs> yeah, starting as the Disney. Yes. Uh, so speaking of looking into the origin of three of things, Twenty Three and Me is a DNA testing service that can offer insights into your ancestry, health, wellness, and traits. We are selling literal history for you and your family. That is a high value item. Completely Just jerk your dad off into this vial. <laughs> you know, well, believe it or not, you don't have to go that far. Technology has advanced to incredible points. Oh, they send a machine to jack your dad off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's easy to do. No father jerk-offs required. You spit in the tube provided by the 23andMe lab kit. Mail your saliva sample back to the lab. It will be analyzed. They can give you all sorts of weird experiences, such as your taste test report, your sleep report, your saturated fat and weight report, and if you're lactose intolerant. All sorts of awesome stats, not just finding out if your grandmother was faithful. The call to action <laughs> is as follows and will be told to you by Jackson. So order your 23andMe health and ancestry service kit at 23andMe.com slash official. That's the number 23AND. M-E dot com slash official. So go there and get your ancestry kit. There's some, this is going to be like an obscure question for you though, Daniel, because I watched your shit when we scheduled you. I wasn't familiar with your work up until then. Uh, yeah, and thanks I, for calling shit, by the way. It's it's an expression. I call everything shit. It's, you know, the stuff. But anyway. It's anyway, the that I call everyone cunt. It's not an insult. Everyone's a cunt. See, I say the same thing, and my mom just doesn't get me. It's not a phase. But what I'm trying to get at, you did Robot Wars, yeah? Like, yeah, I don't... Yeah. That, is, that was, like, my favorite fucking show when it came out, man. Can you please describe your experience with Robot Wars as well as your favorite bot? Uh, so I'm assuming you watched the American version. Did you watch the British version? Both, because I was such a huge fucking fan. When Mick Foley, <laughs> when uh, when he was hosting it, I loved it so much that I went online because I heard there was other versions and I watched everything, everything I could find. I always, British version wise, I got a, a big shout out to Cassius, the first ever self-writing robot on the British TV show. I still remember when it got flipped over and then it used its own flipper to write itself and being like 10 years old and going, holy fuck, this is the future. Um, <laughs> Wheelie Big Cheese was always fun. Oh, Wheelie Big Cheese! You just hit my nostalgia button with that one. I always rooted for him. <laughs> Didn't he, like, never win? Ever? Yeah, he would never win. Do you remember, and I've got some fun fucking stories about these guys. Do you remember Diatoire? Sort of. Mm, not really. The the one that was, like, a fucking circular shape. It had two eyes on it, and it was covered in a uh, red carpet that had black spots on it, and it always caught fire. It's not ringing any bells. Oh, well, they were they were like a fucking staple of British Robot Wars for years and years and years. And um, basically, like, by se we only, we started going on, like, season two, but they'd been all the way through. So, like, by season five, it got to the point where Diatoire, all the, all the robot roboteers stayed in the same fucking hotel. You were booked into this place. Uh, by season three, Diatoire was always booked into a separate hotel because they were three <laughs> uh, heavy Irish fucking drinkers, right? By that, I mean they could drink until 6 a.m. and then wake up at 7, right? So uh, they would just take all of the crew out, the house robot drivers, uh, the technicians, the engineers, the cameramen, and get them so drunk that I think once they had to cancel a day of filming because Diatoire turned up and were like, where's everyone? And they were like, you killed them all, you psychos. <laughs> Jeez! Wow. You're, let's can we talk about your bot? It was a bot out of hell, right? So, uh, yeah. So for, for three years, for, for I think we were on three or four seasons. For the first season, one we did one called All Torque. Now my dad and his mates were sort of evil geniuses. Instead of focusing on uh, weapons and whatnot, uh, you got a hundred kilo limit. So what they decided, they were like, "Fuck it, let's just put all the weight into the uh, en <laughs> engines and motors that run the wheel." Like, it doesn't matter how good your axe is. If I hit you at 40 miles an hour, you're fucked. 
right? You can have whatever flip or whatever you want. If I hit you at 40 miles, you're dead. So they did that. We still hold the world record for these two in season two. It was a, uh, it wasn't just robots versus against each other. You did, it was a May sort of one, an assault course type thing. And then one of them was you would joust, joust against Matilda. It was like basically sumo wrestling. You drive cool. up this thing mm -hmm. and Matilda was in the middle. And we hold the record for that because we got her off in about four seconds because it was <laughs> all the power was in the fucking wheel. We just rammed right through her. Wow. And then after that, uh, you must remember the robot called Hypnodisc. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, oh, my, dad, so my dad saw Hypnodisc, which had, had an aluminium wheel that went horizontal at about, I think it was about, I'm going to say fucking 70 horsepower. Um, these facts aren't correct, but who gives a shit? Uh, Post truth, fake news. And my dad went, that's a great idea, but I can do it better. So he got my, he got, <laughs> one of his friends worked on the oil rigs in the, in Scotland <laughs> and he got them to steal one of the diamond encrusted blades that they use <laughs> for cutting through miles and miles and miles of rock. What? Oh, holy shit. He stuck it on the front of the robot, right? Had it rolling backwards. So if you hit that disc, you fly 30 feet up in the air. We did our auditions in Glasgow, and the robot we were up against was swept off the stage. Like, there was <laughs> not a single... It was just one hit, destroyed it in one. It was uh, ten times more powerful than the Hypnodisc one. So we, we're we pretty fucking confident that we're going to win this series, right? We're very, very confident. It's it's made to look like a fucking motorbike. It was called Bought Out of Hell based on the Meat Love song. It had a little... Uh, robot rider in the back, which my dad very hilariously named Metal Oaf, as a pun on Meatloaf. Uh, <laughs> because I was 10, and I still consider this a form of child abuse, they dressed me up as a fucking biker. I had a little bandana on, a little denim jacket, because oh. I didn't know any better. Oh, oh that's so cute. That is cute. Oh, you can find videos of this. Uh, and my dad goes down, and they so he, there's a problem with the disc. He's not getting it working. They got all the engineers. Everyone on Robo Wars is lovely, right? They really, really help each other, except for the cunts from Behemoth who are a bunch of little dweebs. Um, <laughs> uh, everyone else in the show is real, real lovely, lovely top people. So the people who we're about to go up against, they are working on our robot to get it working. Like, they know our robot's going to destroy them, but, the, you know, it's a fucking family type thing. But we get it running, and one of the health and safety guy comes backstage, and he goes, you, we, like, the, it was deafening, this fucking machine. And he comes back and he goes, you can't use this on the show. And we were like, why not? And they go, because it's illegal. And we were like, no, we were like, what, illegal on the show? And they were like, no, illegal in the UK. We don't know how you make this. <laughs> like, this is designed for going through fucking rock. What do you think it's going to do to two inches of bulletproof glass? This is going to kill people. <laughs> oh. Wow. So they wouldn't let us use the weapon. So we went on weaponless. And we obviously got our asses kicked. And I cried because I was emotionally mature. Um, but my dad, being the genius that he is, when he came off stage, a bunch of the house roboteers were like, how did you get it to do that? And my dad basically takes off the back of their control. And he's like, that's shite. That's wrong. That's wrong. You're an idiot. And they go, do you want a job? And he was like, 100%. So we got to stay down for like an extra two weeks while my dad worked on the house robots. He drove Sir Kill a lot in some of the international events. <laughs> oh, Sir Kill a lot. The one that, that was the giant fucking suit of armor that did absolutely nothing, right? In season one, he, had, he used to have the, because his claw got shit after season <laughs> three. But his claw yeah. in season two was the legit fire uh, fighter one that they used for cutting through crash cars. So it used to, but that's quite small, so it used to destroy things, right? But my dad being my dad, there was one episode, I can't remember who it was, where they knocked off Sir Killalot's chess piece. And my dad, you bet your fucking ass my dad stole that. Still have it in my bed. <laughs> still have it in my dad's bed. That's I so cool. I feel like your dad's working on robots in his shed still and he's attaching nuclear armaments to <laughs> their, like, yeah. bristles. Is, that, like, a is your dad Dr. Wiley? <laughs> he, was, he was one step away from just putting a fucking Uzi on top and going, fuck it. <laughs> he's got... There was one point where they were trying to get the robots working in there. So they sent up uh, a sort of shredded them without the spikes. They couldn't get dead metal working, right? So my dad's like, just fucking send it up to me. I'll fix it, right? So my dad, <laughs> they send up dead metal minus all the spikes and the claw, but basically like the base level of dead metal. And, my, and uh, so my dad gets it working, right? And on a Saturday, we go to my school playground because it's the only place big enough to practice fucking driving it. 
and it was just a fucking ten year old me sat on dead metal as my dad drove me around the fucking school parking lot. That's such a fond memory. And now if you go into your dad's basement, there's like a full Pacific Rim robot ready to rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. Let's go back to your playground. What was that yeah, uh, Hugh Jackman movie with the fucking fighting robot? Oh, oh uh, real uh, metal steel. something metal? Real, real steel. steel. Oh, it's close. Real steel, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> your dad's upgraded from that. He's got fucking Gundams on deck now. <laughs> my mom, my mom could have died seven years ago, and my dad could have just fucking replaced her with some fucking. Robot. <laughs> you, maybe he already has. Maybe you wouldn't know. <laughs> Meet your new know. mother, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, outfitted her with a chainsaw in her asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, basically, this, this, the second my mom passed the Turing test, she was allowed back into the house. <laughs> <laughs> Got all of these parts for cheap, Daniel, thanks to honey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, damn. <laughs> Aya with the lead in for the ads this time. Nobody wants to feel like they're overpaying when they're shopping online when they're buying parts for their dead robot wife. Because there's now an easier way to get the lowest price called honey. Kaya, you started it. Why don't you finish it? If you want to get honey, it's an extension that gives you, you know, a couple of coupons for free on websites like Amazon and uh, other such shops for free. It's a free extension. You can get it if you want to support us at joinhoney.com slash official. What was it, boys? They saved people like, what, 80, 100 billion thousand dollars mm-hmm. or something? Yes, roughly. Ooh, okay, right. You can go to joinhoney.com slash official. Get honey for free. Your honey. Honey likes saving people money but they don't like being paid. In fact, Honey has already saved listeners of this podcast an average of 22 bucks and 24 cents. <laughs> it's for free, dude. So, so Yeah, for free. So yeah. go to joinhoney.com slash official. Get the free, free yeah. browser extension for your browser. It doesn't matter what kind of a browser it is. Any browser on the planet, this, this hoe does not discriminate. And you will get free coupons on any website that you use that they support, like Amazon, for instance. Look, so who is can... your favorite company, Daniel? Damn it. My favorite company. Oh, mm-hmm. God. Yeah, who, who would you yeah. like to sponsor you? Who would you swallow your grandfather's cum for? Oh, I'm, look, I mean, if I met the right girl and that was what she wanted me to do, I'd, I'd have questions. But, you know, love is love. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know who would want to fucking sponsor me. Um... I don't know, something I'd want fucking free tickets to. Like, hey, fucking if UFC sponsored me, first of all, what a mismatch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you want the wettest man that ever existed? Absolutely. Come watch these bigger guys than me punch each other to death. <laughs> I mean, I could see it. You could be yeah. in the middle of it. You could be the ref. Ooh, that'd be a cool event. Do like a do like an MMA fight, except one of them is just a little puny scrawny man, and he has to like run away and not get killed for the full round. I'd watch that. Oh, and the, yeah, the the, the yeah. MMA dudes can kill him, like it's legal. Yes, legally. And, and then and then in round three, to spice it up, they give the nerd a knife. I mean, that's <laughs> that's just kind of like Bone Saw versus Spider Man and Tobey Maguire's Spider Man. Are you telling me oh, that wasn't up, one man. of the best scenes of the movie, Charlie? For, for, for every 30 seconds you survive, they throw in, like, a bigger weapon. So, like, after 30 seconds, they throw in a toothpick. And you're like, right, fucking, just give me 30 more, and then I got a hammer. And then if you can survive four minutes, you got a fucking bazooka. It's yeah. Like, yeah, it's like a Call of Duty game mode or but, some shit. But, <laughs> but, yeah. al- but also, the challenge gets harder. They start throwing in more and more MMA fighters. <laughs> so they start Ooh. ganging up on you. Ooh. I'd watch I the really fuck like out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that we should just finally break down all the pretension and cut down all the all the bullshit moral high ground and start having actual blood sports? I always yes. said I think that's a really good idea for society. Yeah. <laughs> the vegans are against this idea. Vegans are against everything. <laughs> but they can they have superpowers now. What do they care? Um, what? Wait, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> you don't read those kind of propaganda posts? Oh, oh, about, what, oh, what are you what talking about, about? Yeah, no, the one, the last vegan propaganda that I read was the woman who tried to hike Mount Everest while being a vegan and she died. <laughs> oh, yeah, li- no, literally, there was a woman who was a total vegan and she was like, I'm going to f- hike Mount Everest to prove that, you know, vegans are strong. And then she died on Mount Everest. It's just, it's just bullshit. Like, uh, I'll often, I like to read a bunch from these communities and such like, so no fat people like to believe that they, you know, become immortal when they stop <laughs> ejaculating. 
And a lot of vegan people say like they can no longer ever get sick. They've transcended sickness and they no longer itch and their asshole doesn't smell if they fart or anything. It's just like a all of these bullshit health benefits that are very clearly false. Like how Kim Jong-un doesn't have a butthole. Just nonsense. That's Because he's a vegan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's ascended. Well, yeah, he, he, he's too good for buttholes. Well, obviously, when you're in that position, you have to be. Weighs you down. I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's a good question. How come we still don't have that? I know everybody w- wants to score some political points and blame the other side for why we don't have fun things. Like, oh, oh, it's the libtards. Oh, no, it's the conservatives who would be against this. But how come we really don't have it? Aside from the <laughs> memes and shit. Like, what? It's, you, can, you sign up for free. Uh, Rather, under no duress, nobody is persuading you to sign up. If you want to sign up for a death match yourself, <laughs> it's up to you. How come we don't have death matches? Oh, uh, I think that, honestly the reason is people would be too like ashamed of themselves to buy tickets and support it openly. You know what I mean? I completely disagree. I think it's people want to take the moral high ground and not support it. I think there's a hundred percent of audience. Says. That's exactly well, no, what no, no, I'm no. saying. Yeah. Well, well, no, no, no. You. Oh, I thought you were saying they'd be all like, I don't want to watch this. This is bad and wrong. Like, yeah, I, no, I'm not just, exactly it's what all. you'll say. But I, I think, I think yeah. that in culture, there for sure would be people. I, I think that there is for sure a, a group of people who would actively, openly be like, fuck yeah, let's do it. I want it to happen. And if there were blood sports, they would absolutely not even think about doing it. Yeah, but you would have people on both sides just, you know, yeah. go, oh, this is, the, you know, Jesus wouldn't like this. This is very, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, or oh this is no you're you're killing people of color here this is not acceptable this is very uh not <laughs> closed minded and not progressive at all no i think charlie is right that's a good point people yeah. are just they would not buy tickets openly you would exactly. have to have some sort of a system to figure out how to sell tickets anonymously so people could tune into two savages bashing each other's skulls. I, think I mean, there's a, there's a demand mean, for this. this. Yeah, there's a demand for this for sure. We already it's have like black, underground... It's the black market. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we already have underground fight clubs and kill rings and all that shit. It's just, how do we make it public? And it's <laughs> where? <laughs> where, do, well, I, where the fuck well, do you buy your tickets? I don't know anything look, about this. Let me, let me you put speak it this so way. casually of this... Yeah, we already have an underground <laughs> championship <laughs> ring. Uh, let me put it this way. Would you... Let me put it this way. How would you prefer if you have a whole group of death row inmates, would you either they go from lethal injection or this or that, or while they're on waiting their trial, they or not their trial, they're waiting their de- execution date, and they've been told there's no hope of parole or anything, they're going to be killed by the state. You have a man in a nice suit with like a full grill of golden teeth, too many rings to count, maybe a cool hat, and he walks up and he slides a contract into their cell and says, you know, there's another way. And and literally, they just sign up to willingly be part of a death fight, and it's televised, and everyone watches, and they fight to win their freedom. Wouldn't you prefer yes, that? Yes, please. I don't think they have to be cri- criminals. Like, fucking, why, why, look, let's, let's yeah. really ask the Make-A-Wish kids what they really, really want. Ooh. Like, do they want to, <laughs> do they want to feel rushed <laughs> of killing another man? Well, t- <laughs> well no, you put, gotta, them, put them okay, in the sport. Well, no, Daniel, you gotta sell that well. Yeah. You can't just go to a make a wish kid and be like, hey, do you want to partake in a death match? You got to say like, hey, we got this new technology. It's a laser ray. You want to use it, kid? Yeah, well, you're in a death match. You get to you go. You go in there and you go, look, if they're adults, you go, you know, the winner, of the pro- if you compete in this, we give some money to your family. We give some of the ticket sales to the family. And then and then if you're a kid, we get the rock to host it and you get to meet the rock. Yeah, oh, the Rock's just exactly. got kids' blood it's all over so his cute. face by the end of it. I, I think the Rock loves Jerry. He'll definitely be on board with this idea. Oh Look, yeah, I, I don't saying, see any issue with this. First all of all, I'm why saying, why act like there's it's only the hopeless, like the people on death row and terminally ill children who would agree to this? There's plenty of retards on the planet who would just do this for money or shits and giggles, even. Because mm-hmm. If if they if you're a consenting adult, all I'm fucking saying. Is we bring back robot wars, but we make it people wars, and we yes. have the same format. You, dr- you get hosts. a guy, yeah, you get a guy, you get a team. They dress him up with armor, weapons. They train him in any fighting style. You have you have things to keep it fair, like no firearms or any of that. 
and then they fight to the death. And if after like a time limit, no one's died, you send in your ringers, your Sir Kills a lot in this, that. You send in like seven foot six, 400 pound bodybuilders with baseball bats to just finish them off. Daniel Sloss's dad as well. I throw him in there. Andrew, <laughs> we agree. We agree. There, I don't think there's much of a, like, from a libertarian point of view, how come consenting adults can't agree to just kill each other for our amusement? But I think Charlie is right. It would just be too many people going, nah, Jesus wouldn't like this. It ain't right. <laughs> they like just be ashamed of their neighbors. There has oh, to be wait, a wait, cultural wait. <laughs> shift where this so, would become as acceptable as watching Pokemon. So you're telling me that the only reason they wouldn't like it is because Jesus wouldn't like it? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the only reason they wouldn't like it is because they don't want to look bad. Oh yeah, yeah Kai is not trying to saying. put words in Jesus's mouth. He'd never right. do that. Well, yeah, well, let's like, yeah, let's let Jesus form his own opinion. I think Jesus would love it. I'm just saying that people wouldn't like, you know, being thought of as the person who's betting well, on champions people, in the some death people, ring. Some people are disgusted by blood, Kai. I think there's plenty of people oh, out there who? that wouldn't want to watch this. What? What? What kind of a pussy? Who? I used to be what really. About your, what about your? What about your grandmother or? Or yeah, uh, of a grandmother. <laughs> I used to be super. What you say? I used to be super afraid of blood and stuff. Like I wouldn't play T-rated games because I was afraid I'd see blood when I was younger. <laughs> yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Very much so. Even the this plenty of people. Even like hearing about like bloody games or movies used to give me the heebie-jeebies. Daniel, I'm so sorry you had to come on the show with this little coward over here. Jesus. Oh, no, I don't. Yeah, wow, what the fuck? I, I am the most squeamish motherfucker in the world. Like, I can't. Yeah, yeah I'm real bad. I can't watch horror movies. No. Oh, wow. Really? really? Who is this guy? Yeah, oh, dude, thanks for coming, but, uh, <laughs> ugh. You don't like horror movies? How interesting. We didn't need a 23 and make it to find out you're a quivering pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an absolutely I'm a labia I'm an absolute like I just I don't like the experience of fucking fear like there's no okay, point I'm if I'm like I'm that. walking down the street be like oh I wish I was scared see I'm, I'm with you on that I don't enjoy where the whole gimmick is being scared I, I don't like that I'm with you on that but being afraid of like blood like that's what's in you man come on yeah and it's meant to it's stay, stay in, in you. you yeah I'm, like it's not like I'm not I'm not like women who just you know they grow up and they're like well once a month I bleed they're fucking used to it like that's I've, if I bled out my dick I'd fucking I'd never work again I'd be in a fucking chemo ward <laughs> <laughs> time they'd be like this isn't cancer it's your period I'd be like shut up fucking doctor I know I'm dying just fix it cure me <laughs> make the blood go away oh <laughs> uh. Uh, speaking of bodily fluids, though, Dollar Shave Club has Jesus. everything you need to clean and treat those Let's fluids. Try our new shaving foam. All you have to do is take your dad's cup, <laughs> spit it into a vial. <laughs> to, to Every the time. Shave but you, you can take those fluids and wipe them away because you can get everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best with their shower stuff, hair styling products, toothbrushes, toothpaste, and, of course, razors and shave supplies. Charlie, you haven't said anything ad related. Why don't you go ahead? Oh, uh, well, it's pretty simple here. It, uh, it's pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting choked up. <laughs> swallowing your dad. Uh, you're, you're, you're getting all choked up. It's so emotional <laughs> over it. You caught me in a real bad time there. I was taking a drink of water. It's pretty simple, Andrew. It's you get razors, you shave shit off your face, you shave shit off your body if you want. There's also the one wipe Charlie so you can wipe your asshole and keep it all clean, spick, spam. There's Dr. Carver's legendary shaving butter. Uh, which... I wonder what that's made from. <laughs> <laughs> does it leave your face smooth? I bet it fucking does. You don't want to make an enemy of Dr. Carver. This is off the record, Daniel. We have got the hammer down from Dr. Oh. Carver. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. you, also, no. you also don't want to make friends with him because he starts like a fucking cow milking farm. Just so we can get that sweet, sweet, sweet <laughs> to make all of our faces so but, nice. Uh, Take it away, Jackson. What? What? What with? Just Jackson, you're action. not ready because right now you too can get the amazing deal on any of their starter sets by going to dollarshaveclub.com/slash/official. You can get the amazing deal of five dollars for the entire daily essentials starter set that comes with some amber lavender body cleanser. 
or pick any other starter set. I don't know, they're all great. You wash your face and body, don't you? You'll need it. DollarShaveClub.com slash official. And one more time, because it's written here three times, DollarShaveClub.com slash official. Thanks, Jackson. You're a pretty young guy, and to get into the comedy field, based on what I've heard, it's pretty rough for up-and-comers. What was it like earning the respect of your peers, or have you even earned their respect, rather? Uh, now, I, now I have. There was a couple of years where I was, uh, when I was young, uh, I, because I was a fucking box ticker, you know, I was, I was young, I got some TV breaks um, ahead of some other better comedians. Um, I mean, I fucking worked for them and I nailed the spots, but, you know, definitely I was given uh, an opportunity ahead of other people. Uh, so there was definitely a period where I sort of, sort of felt like an imposter backstage. You know, I was given gigs, you know, given sort of, not a free run, but, you know, a little boost and stuff just based on the fact that I was young and that was new and interesting. Uh, but then I fucking worked my ass off for 10. I just made sure that, you know, I made myself undeniable. Hmm. And was that the advice you'd give to anyone up and coming, regardless of how young they are, just to keep grinding and eventually get there? Yeah, I mean, like, the, the, the one secret to fucking comedy is just keep doing it. Like, the only way you're going to get better is by going on stage, uh, no matter where it is, get as much stage time as you can. Um, because, you, you got first of all, you got to get used to being on stage. You know, the biggest trick to comedy is looking confident. You know, if, if you're confident, the audience are the smartest and the dumbest people at the same time. Now, the smartest in the sense that if you're, if you're nervous, they can see your fucking nervousness and they can sense your nervousness. And if you're nervous, if you're not confident in yourself, why the fuck should they be? But in the same way, after the female orgasm, confidence is the easiest thing in the world to fake. So if you pretend to be fucking confident, they'll buy into it. And then at that point, just fucking own the stage. Make it, you know, mark your territory. I think that's pretty fair yeah. advice. Has anyone ever jacked off in front of you? <laughs> like behind the scenes to give, you, to give you a gig? I've had some fucking weird ones. Like... I got bitten by a fan once. Ooh, ooh, oh, really? Jesus, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was nineteen, and I'd just done this TV show in the UK called Michael McIntyre's Roadshow, and then I was doing like my first sort of live gig after that, and uh, I was doing like I, I like meeting fans after the show just to fucking thank them for the support and stuff like that, and I was doing a full with this, and this, I was eighteen, nineteen, and this woman was at, at, for like twenty three or twenty four, and just I went you know, for a hug in the foot and she just fucking bit my neck. What mm. the fuck? The vampire. Did you, well, ask, did you, did you take a second to ask her why? No, no. My agent came in and fucking just, <laughs> just beat and her up. Her. <laughs> <laughs> what, I'll get, take yeah. it from here. Zip. My agent's a tiny Austrian woman, but she's a fucking Rottweiler. So she was, wet. cause I didn't know how to deal with that. I was fucking 19. Like, I don't know what to do. So my agent just came in and, you know, you my her back. Sits. I haven't seen her since. She's in a fucking a black side or something, Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, yeah. That's a weird story, Daniel. I meant more like obese ginger men like Louis C.K. just whacking it off in front of you, but... Oh, um, no, not yet, but one can dream. I, I am curious, though, about like how much of that delinquency kind of shit goes on behind the scenes. Not just comedy, obviously, just in general. I think about that a lot. Just because that story with Louis C.K. was so interesting to me. Well, it's, I, I think that, you know, there's a, there can be fucking power trips in comedy. You know, it's a very, you feel very powerful on stage and some people, <clears throat> you know, don't know how to handle power or they think they, they, they become entitled to it. They become entitled to things. And also you've got to understand like a lot of comedians as well, especially male ones, you know, the ones that were like, bullied in high school and then you know never given attention and then suddenly they're this comedian that relates to the audience and the audience relate to them and uh you know they get female attention for the first time and you know they regress to back to when they were in high school getting rejected by women and they you know some of that times out fucking comes out and you know they never had the power over women before and now they think that they're entitled to it and it's a revenge thing. And even if they don't realize that's what they're doing, I'd say psychologically, it absolutely is. And uh, yeah, they just fucking don't know how to handle it. Like it goes to people's heads. That's why I think it's very, very important to surround yourself with friends who think you're a piece of shit. Hmm. So I'm grounded. Yeah. An anchor. Yeah. 
Yeah, somebody that just you, you know you need you need friends that no matter how successful you become, they're like I've seen you fucking vomit. I've walked in on you masturbating. You know I've you know they've been with you. They've, doesn't matter how successful you come, you're still just the same whole old dickhead to them. Were you one of those uh, up and com? Well, not up and comers, but were you in high school? Were you bullied? Were you one of those comics? You went through that gauntlet. Do you jack off in front of people now? <laughs> no, only, only when they ask. <laughs> that's yeah. That's nice. That's, yeah, it's normal behavior. We all do. Yeah. Um, no, no. In, in, I was. Quite, I went to a very, very small primary school in Scotland. Like there was about a hundred pupils overall, and there was twenty in a class or something like that. And uh, then I went to a high school, a much bigger high school, but I didn't know anyone. So I spent like a, you know, maybe like a year. I had some friends, but like I'd gone from being the most popular kid at this very, very small school to like the least popular. And because nobody knew me because, you know, I came from a different school in high school. And uh, I think that's when I started, you know, learning comedy a bit more because, you know, it's a way to get fucking people to like you. But I was never... I was never that fucking woe is me. You know, I got bullied at some points in the same way that, you know, most of us got fucking bullied in high school. But nothing, you know, none of the traumatic shit, nothing that stuck with me. Like, I just remember, you know, anytime the fucking jobs were like, you're a fucking nerd. And I was like, yeah, all right, cool. And what? I'm like, what are you? Like, I'm not going to fucking apologize for who I am, you fucking dweeb. And also in 20 years time, I'll be earning more money than you. Why would I give a shit? Mm-hmm. So now... Mm-hmm. What would you like to say to your bullies that are listening now? What would you say to them? Oh, uh, they know I've won. Aww. <laughs> like, That's so the, cute. It, it, like, I guarantee you my bullies have Netflix. And guess what, cunts? I'm on Netflix. One nil. I'm, I'm still waiting for, uh, for Jerry Skoskin, your, your worst bully in high school, who's sitting up in his penthouse suite. Just lighting, lighting a cigar with hundreds, and just going. Ah, he thinks he's one. Ah. <laughs> one of my school, one of my schoolmates was actually Donald Trump, so he actually does. A oh, oh well, <laughs> <laughs> your bullies are presidents now. <laughs> <laughs> you dweeb. <laughs> Definitely a fucking bully at high school. Like, there's no way that cunt was a fucking bully. And all of his, you know, bully victims don't have, they're like, the motherfucker became <laughs> How do you beat that? I mean, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fucked. That would be a rough situation Why for sure. Why couldn't go to a nice guy like us, right, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> You're that kid. Bully. Where, why don't good girls like nice guys? Why don't you? Why don't you get some catharsis though? Even though, even though you won, why don't you call out one of your bullies right now? You can, you can change the name, but just one incident you remember. The that hell you are they gonna do? No, 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 no. Just one incident he remembers, like someone. So, he remembers a really like, nasty wedgie or a terrible swirly. Why don't you? <laughs> they'll know. Who, they'll know who who you're talking about. You can call them out right now. Do it, uh, Jeff. Um, I fucking I won't say his second name, but that is is his fucking first name. I remember being outside. I think we were in like third year of high school, so I must have been about third. Oh no, it was it fucking no fuck it. I'll call out Nick. Fucking the entire time in math, I sat at the fucking front. And this fucking jock cunt because he was good at football. Thought that counted for a fucking personality trait. Cunt used to have used to have long hair. Uh, I used to have long hair because. Uh, my mom used to pay for my haircuts, and then when I was like 13, she was like, you can start paying for your own haircuts, and I was like, oh, we'll fucking see, and so I grew my hair for like eight months, and I would just sit in math, and fucking Nick behind me would just fucking pull my hair, um, just around in points to show off to all the fucking girls, and I would just like to say this to you, Nick, I now earn more than your fucking dad. Take that, Nick. I think he was just flirting with you, though, man. Like, maybe he yeah, wasn't a bully. I think he was coming up to you. Yeah, what do you mean? How is that showing off? Like, hey, girls, I'm pulling this guy's hair. I'm not gay. You're gay. Yeah. Oh, he was one of the... Yeah, yes, he was a fucking shit cunt. God, I hope he's sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I hope that we got that off your chest now. And Nick... Very, has... very, very, very cathartic. Thank you, boys. Yeah, Nick has probably canceled his patronage, unfortunately. We'll miss Nick. Yeah. He's not supporting the show anymore. <laughs> Maybe awesome. We should do that. Get like everyone's bullies on for an episode. <laughs> just insult. Just, just the opposite though. Instead of that, you know, in therapy, they're like, meet your bully. You know, you've you've demonized them so much in your head. Just fucking, you know, bully them. Let that let the bully come on the show, and then like fully <laughs> yeah. apologize oh. to the person. They're like, look, I've grown as a doll. I remember why I did to you, and I'm so embarrassed. 
and then I'm just allowed one fucking free swing. <laughs> I don't know why people don't do that. They used to have something similar one time that I watched in Germany on TV. Something like, meet your bully. This is what, you know, they had like high school bullies and college bullies and even bullies from work. They had these women sit in the same studio as their work bullies. Like, you're an adult. You're not this scrawny 13-year-old. You have the means now. If you know your bully, just, you know, get him. Just, what the Wait. fuck are you getting him on TV? What the fuck is wrong with you? What is, what is this? You really hurt? They have like little letters written in their hands, shaking like you like a leaf in front of class, but they're doing it on national TV, like shaking. You, you really hurt me when you took my glasses in third grade, and then and then you said I was fat. Just what the fuck? Like you're thirty years old now. You have money. Just find this dude. Take some revenge the adult way. What, what is wrong with people? Is, is that the adult way? Hire a hitman? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like, I like yeah. your height of emotional maturity. <laughs> just, just take this grudge that you, let's be honest, that ultimately you have against a nine-year-old. <laughs> hunt them down in later life when they're a father and just kill them. <laughs> no I'm not saying, saying kill them. I'm just saying like, hey, listen, you... <laughs> I'm just saying, you can do something about it now that isn't just crying on TV. Do That's, something about it. I'm always for crying on TV. That's always good content. Keep, Keep it, it up. It man. is good content. And you know what? It's cathartic. You know, it helps. It lets it all out. Sometimes the words just need to be spoken. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you cried, Daniel? Oh, man. Fucking yesterday. Really? You were that excited to come on the show? <laughs> I was just so excited to meet my heroes. <laughs> I uh, fucking like I, I for years and years and years I used to not cry. I used to stop myself crying so as a fucking sign of weakness. So I just sat there like a sociopath, just denying myself emotion. And um, I've no idea why. I've seen my father cry. I don't know where it fucking came from. I don't know. I just saw it as a sign of weakness. And then um, I just got fucking bored of it. So now I've got this little fucking weird. Um, <laughs> Th self therapy session where like if I haven't cried in three months, what I'll do is I'll get like a bag of weed, I'll get two bottles of wine, I'll get fucking stoned and drunk as fuck, and then I'll I'll watch YouTube videos of soldiers coming home to their dogs. Oh, this is eerie. Oh man, it's so great. It's just like an hour of me like openly weeping, be like, oh my god, his dog missed him so much. <laughs> Either that one, or, one, or have you ever seen the fucking videos of the colorblind people getting in chroma glasses? Yes. Oh. Daniel, this is so eerie. I will do the same thing. Like, oh, woman hears for the first time. For the time. first time. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a, like, I'll, I think, you know, for years and years and years, I, I denied myself the right to cry. It's the fucking pets. It's just like, I don't do it publicly. Like, I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not a loser. <laughs> <laughs> I do the same thing, man. It just it's it feels good, but at the same time, you're still kind of sort of ashamed of it. So it feels good to just have an excuse, like an outlet, like oh, I'm watching Zootopia. It's fine to cry a little bit. This is good. I'm high. I'm drunk. Whatever. Yeah, or the other way. Yeah, you just watch it. It's like bleeding a radiator, right? You just gotta let the fucking tension out. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you want to cry and you don't have a fucking reason for it. So just give yourself one. The number one yeah. movies I always cry at. Have you ever seen Warrior? Is that the Warrior? Yes. That's yeah. the Tom Hardy uh, and Joe yeah. Ledger. That Warrior makes me is a so great movie. One of the most great underrated movie. movies. One of the most underrated movies of all time. I, I haven't seen that one. I know what it is. Well, anyone anyone who hasn't seen, seen it, it's, about it's the, like uh, the guy who's like a real shit boy, but he wins MMA fights or something. He's yeah, boxing, well, he's not it? a shit boy though. Both of the, all of the characters in this movie are good, except the alcoholic father. But Warrior is like a, it's a two thousands Rocky, I would say. Is that fair, Daniel? Right? Yeah, I would. I, I think it's underrated because they sort of pitched the movie as like you know the the poster of it was like Tom Hardy standing in a UFC case. So a lot of people just thought it was like a dick flick, like just a fucking mind numbing, just violent movie. So that's why I watched it originally. What I was not expecting was the greatest acting of all time from Nick Nolte, who was robbed of an Oscar. And just this movie with so much fucking heart. It's, it's, I, I watch it about three times a year and I cry as hard each time. 
I need to check it uh, out. Yeah. yeah. I didn't this looks really it's interesting. Fun. Yeah. I'll be honest. So, Warrior, it's, it's this do goody family father versus his brother, Tom Hardy, who has a fucking grudge, and justifiably so. And, you know, as a viewer, you kind of end up rooting for Tom Hardy, of course, but it, it's just such a good movie. It, it's fun to watch. Yeah, it's real. It's 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 incredibly beautiful, and I do think it is. It's one of my top three movies. It's so underrated. Really? Yeah, it's one of those movies. I don't know if you've ever had this, but like you know, you know when you love a movie, or you maybe you love an album or a comedy special so fucking much, and you start dating someone, and you always just like oh. a, a couple of weeks or months into the dating, you put on your favorite thing, and if you yeah. if, they don't, if they don't love it, the profound level that you do, they're fucking dead <laughs> to you. <laughs> it's a litmus test, right? Yeah, absolutely. They they either have to love it like you do, or they have to discount it immediately. That's what I've noticed in myself, at least. Like if I make a girl watch Mad Max Fury Road and she's just she doesn't give a fuck from the start, that's fine by me. It's just not, you know. What okay, it's not a chick flick. I get it. Okay. But if she's like analyzing it. And finding the flaws and critiquing it, okay, you know, now I'm gonna be limp all night. Like it's it, this doesn't work. No, Daniel, what are your what are your other top three movies? Tell me, what else do you like? Uh, the Prestige. Oh, I love that movie. movie. Yeah, Prestige is a phenomenal movie. Moana. Oh yeah, Moana's yeah. a fucking bella. And I will argue to the ends of the earth. The Adam Sandler remake of Longest Yard is exceptional, and I will not hear a word said against it. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to love that movie because I was like a huge sports guy, and I was like, yeah, I fucking love sports dudes playing football and shit. This is my movie. And I would watch that movie so fucking often, man. It's a good movie. I liked it too. It's so funny to watch it. It's not like fucking uh, Chris Rock's in it. Fucking Bart Reynolds is in it. Goldberg's in it. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, Nelly's in it. Terry Crews is in it. Yeah, Joey it's... Diaz is in it. You just fucking um, Tracy Morgan even, uh, plays a crossdresser. Even fucking Burt Reynolds is in it, and he was in the original as well. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. just it's such a da- fucking um, what's it? Courtney Cox is in it. Like it's you just watch it and you go. Why the fuck did you all agree to do this movie? Like, what money. Yeah, I, well, the budget I, must have been huge. I love how you mentioned Joey Diaz as a big name actor. As the oh yeah, no, but not as a big name actor, but on the comedy circuit, Joey Diaz is Joey Diaz. Yeah, I no, I love him. He, he, him talking about his farts on Joe Rogan is one of my favorite things on the internet. I love that shit. Do you have any good farts what? for us, Daniel? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I fucking, no, I, I, I've gone through a problem. I've, I've, I've accidentally become one of the worst people in the world. I, I've, I, I've become gluten intolerant. <laughs> oh. you're, you're afraid of horror Yikes. movies and a gluten intolerance. I know. I'm the fucking worst. I'm the fu- Here's me complaining about fucking betas in comedy, and I'm like, no, sometimes I eat muffins and shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A champion. I've never been gluten intolerant before. Like it, just, it can come on in fucking later life, and I just that. So basically, what happened was in uh, March this year, I was in Australia doing the comedy festivals out there, and I was just drinking like a goddamn champion, like fucking every day, having fun. It's a festival, uh, you know, doing drugs, having the time of my life, and then just by the end of it, just every shit I take, there's just fucking mucus in it. Oh, like it looked like I'd come on my own shit, right? Ugh. I'm looking at it I'm like, well, that's not healthy, but I can. <laughs> like every every shit I had, it looked like it was about to break apart. But Spider Man was very against the idea of it breaking apart. So he fucking webbed it back together. Wow. So you're you're one of those people who's because I feel like the jury's out on this whole gluten thing. I feel an equal number of people are for it and against it being a real thing, the gluten intolerance, and I'm I'm just not convinced. Fully against the fucking idea, but I just thought it was like that fucking LA hippie fucking thing, right? So yeah. at least for, in, in typical male fashion, I'm like, well, I'll just let this sort itself out. I'm not going to go to the doctor or anything like that. <laughs> and then after about three months of just these fucking cummy snotty shits. I was like, I was like, I should probably get this checked out. So I go to the doctor, and while I'm in there, I immediately forget the words for mucus and stool. Uh, so I'm just, she's like, "What's well, this the problem?" I'm like, "There's, there's snot 
on my shed. <laughs> <laughs> Get this in your stool. I was like, yeah, that one. Um, at least I hope it's fucking mucus. And she, you know, she was like, we'll do a blood test and stuff, but it sounds like you're gluten intolerant. What you should do is go away for four days and just cut gluten out and just see what happens. And like immediately, immediately my poos go back to fucking normal, right? So I go back in and I see her and I'm like, yeah, that kind of worked. She was like, yeah, well, you're gluten intolerant. I'm like, well, so what happens if I eat gluten? She's like, well, you, your shits are weird. And I'm like, and that's it. And she's like, and that's it. And I'm like, well, I'm not fucking gluten intolerant then. Like, like <laughs> who's looking at my shit? Like, I'm not, <laughs> well, you think I'm going to fucking turn down pizza because my poo doesn't look nice? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Time's gone on, right? <laughs> As time gone on, it's it's getting worse and worse. There's just fucking every shit. Is <laughs> it's just mucus at this point. <laughs> he sneezes when he shits. <laughs> he's out his ass. I'm doing the Edinburgh Comedy Festival, and like on the day after, right, my friend, another comedian, comes around just for a fucking day, and I've not taken. I've since I was diagnosed as gluten intolerant, I've not taken <laughs> any of it seriously. I've changed nothing in my diet. I've just been like, right, cool. My fucking my my shit has mucus in it now that's just who i am i'm the snotty shit guy uh and then but he's getting much worse i was sat down in my fucking jammy pot i've never told you this is horrible <laughs> fuck all right so i sat down playing fifa right and i fart right and my mate immediately goes that sounds that sounded wet and i was like fucking yeah it did and then just the smell lingers for just like a bit too long and oh, I just go to do the like butt scratch and I just feel oh. like not a full shit but like liquid and I'm like oh. god damn it like I've, sh- I've shot myself <laughs> so we finish the game of FIFA because I'm a professional and then <laughs> I, I go downstairs and I, I, I have to ch- I don't, don't want to tell him that I've shot myself but I go downstairs <laughs> and I change my jammy bottoms to another pair of jammy bottoms but now I've done a costume change and like he's going to He's going to notice this. So I come upstairs like with like crisps and stuff, just trying to keep, I'm holding them above my head like, just to keep his uh, eye line above the fact that I've changed my fucking bottoms. I'm like, oh, hey, look, I got crisps. I got difficult. I sit down immediately. Hope he's not noticed. He doesn't say anything. I'm like, right, we're absolutely safe. Cut to 10 minutes later where I've not learned a lesson. And I'm like, clearly I've got rid of all my fucking gluten shit. I fart again, and it just <laughs> happens. <laughs> second fucking game. So, I finish the game. I finish the game again. But in, this, in the first game, I shot myself at 86 minutes. So it was only like two minutes I had to get through. And this one, I shot myself pre-half time. Like, he's spending a lot of time stopping players on. And I'm like, hurry up. He's like, what? We got all day. I'm like, I'm fucking sitting in a puddle of my own shit here. Right? i got to keep making farting noises fart noises to justify the lingering smell <laughs> oh god sorry oh i've got gas oh god <laughs> change into another pair of jammy bottoms i've brought all the crisps upstairs so now like a fucking cycle i come upstairs with bananas be like oh look i've got bananas too just trying to keep this island above my second costume change of the day right and he's not saying anything. At that point, I do not trust any more farts, right? I'm just, I'm holding it in. I'm putting my thumb up there. I just, like, I'm just stopping it coming out. He leaves about two hours later. And to this day, I, one day I'm going to ask him, right? I'm going to be like, are you a good friend? Like, did you realize that I was, you know, emotionally drained from the fucking festival and clearly hung over in time? And did you know that I shot myself twice and gone through two costume changes and you didn't mention anything because you're a bro or are you the dumbest cunt that's ever lived <laughs> you just brought up a story man for me you you may have just diagnosed me with gluten intolerance because I had a nearly identical experience but my, the only difference being is I was at my own home and it was my parents and I had this phase where my shit was super mucusy and it always just kind of looked like you know my ass exploded with snot but i used to like have the same type of wet farts and we were watching a movie i don't remember what it might have been a tv show and i farted as i typically do and i coated my entire trousers in the mucus i wasn't i wasn't super old so as everyone knows i was very open with my parents i'm like mom dad i think i might have shit my pants (laughs) <laughs> and 
lo and behold, yeah, I shit the shit out of my pants that day. And it wasn't like normal shit. It was barely, it was the mucusy, like super wet, viscous fluid. And I demand. Yeah. Yeah, I de- buddy, you're gluten intolerant. I hate to break it to you. You're well, gluten intolerant. It, ha- it hasn't happened since. How I, you- I, uh, I demanded that my mom go. get, I demanded my mom get me a doctor appointment. And my doctor at the time had to be a fraud or something because she'd always just recommend Tai Chi. Maybe she was like peddling a Tai Chi business. She's like, uh, well, it sounds like you need some Tai Chi to tighten your sphincter up or something. And she was like, well, this isn't very helpful. And for that, like a week, I would always have this mucusy shit. And I, I get, shit my sorry, pants hang, like hang three hang or on, four hang times. On. Are you, did you mean to say Chai Tea? Because Tai Chi and Chai Tea are two different no, things. Tai, tai, no, no, Tai Chi. The actual activity of Tai Chi, the okay. like the martial arts. Very weird. <laughs> yeah, it is weird. Diarrhea. No, it wasn't. Well, it wasn't diarrhea. It was straight up sneezing in my ass. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So it's when you stop using fucking. Uh, you stop using toilet paper as toilet paper. It's just to fucking stem the flow. It's just like sneezing. Oh my god, did a bust me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was disgusting. It ran down my leg and shit too when I stood uh, up. It wasn't like solid oh. enough to like get caught in the like the barrier of your at like your mm. uh, trousers. It would Ooh. always run down my leg. Oh Jesus! Oh what my lord! Fuck? Okay, it's disgusting. Well, here's my question: How do you pin that on gluten intolerance specifically? Like when that I happens don't. to me, even if it's like for a, even if it persists for two months, I just go, "Oh, that's the alcohol." That, that's yeah, yeah, I thought it, I, th- I thought it was the alcohol, but honestly, like when I changed, because when I went when I went gluten free, I wasn't not drinking. I was just buying fucking gluten free cider, mm-hmm. uh, and it was uh, like there's a gluten free aisle at the supermarket, and it's just the saddest, <laughs> saddest aisle in the world. It's just me and three people with fucking asthma, and they're like, "These crisps are delicious." I'm like, oh, "I fucking cannot let this be my life." <laughs> so now I'm. Oh my god! Oh, it's such a lie that the whole. Oh, these are just like chips, except they're not chips. They're just like, you know, kettle boiled shoelaces. No, God, it's, it's not the same thing. Gluten's delicious. And uh, I'm pointing to my life. I'm still going to eat gluten. Some days I won't. Like, if, if, if there's a gluten free option available, I'm like, great. I don't have to shit myself tomorrow. But now, <laughs> if there's something delicious, all I have to do is look at it and decide whether it's worth shitting myself over. And nine times out of ten, it is. Do you, so, wait, this continues for you? Because mine stopped after like a week. Oh no, I still got it. And that's why I know it's like if you know, uh, I, I I now no longer trust farts. <laughs> You've been betrayed too many times. Well, Charlie, you don't eat anything. You're like, oh, you know, I got sunflower seeds today. That's yeah, what I, I, I eat. eat. I eat healthy, but I mean, I, I splurge every but now and then, but healthy. I don't pay for you, it with you, my ass explosion. No, you don't eat healthy. You eat boring. Yeah. Mm. I am. No, Charlie maybe, is just maybe boring, you have not IBS. healthy. Isn't IBS the thing where you shit a lot? Or where you fart and shit a lot? Oh, IBS, yeah, but I, IBS, I'm like, you know, gluten is like a legit, like IBS is a debilitating, well, I have a friend with IBS and just like, this points when he just, uh, he's like, I have to leave for an hour. Is it Ariana Grande's <laughs> boyfriend? He has Crohn's, he has IBS. you fucking idiot. Oh, isn't, isn't it the same thing? Oh, but Crohn's gives you IBS, right? Isn't that the thing? I don't know. I, it gives you butthole eyes is all I know. That's the only yeah. symptom I'm familiar with. So his would come out of his face rather than his ass. <laughs> well, okay. So Daniel, do you think maybe this is the next evolution in man is maybe we, we are so far down the evolutionary chain now that men have periods, except it comes out as diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> what? Finally, after years and years and years of women getting the short end of the stick when it comes to fucking body fluids, God's just been like, all right, it's time for men to shit themselves. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's, this, all of our problems sound like they could be solved with a pad in our boxer shorts. Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll just start buying fucking, fucking tampons for my ass. <laughs> Oh, it's, you know, it's almost as if they already make adult diapers for this exact problem. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, but, yeah, but you don't want to walk into Walmart like, I'm an alcoholic. Can you give me diapers? <laughs> I'm going to walk in there and buy tampons. Why do, you have to ta- do you have to declare why you're buying things when you go? Excuse me, Walmart. I'm an alcoholic. I need diapers. <laughs> no, just go in and buy the diapers. And you buy pads and you just go, this is for my girlfriend. And yes. then you have to know. This is oh, for they, my yeah. girlfriend's period and not my leaking asshole. 
Yeah, they all know though. They see you. They see you walk towards the adult gluten free diaper section. They know. <laughs> they yeah. can smell it too. We got a shit. They can smell it too. Like and this guy has. This guy has five gin tonics on his breath. <laughs> I'm sorry, your problem hasn't resolved itself, Daniel. I know. Long, I'm proud to say, and hopefully I don't don't, don't jinx it now. I'm proud to say I haven't made a, a mucusy shit fart in my pants in years now. I'm off. I'm I'm over the hill. He's He's clean. Clean. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm on. I'm on your team now, Daniel. <laughs> Wishing you the same resolution. <laughs> Pray for me. Pray for my asshole. What do you mean he, on his team? You are you are the most judgy motherfucker, Charlie. What? Like, you, I didn't diagnose him with ever gluten in, intolerance. No, Daniel said nine times out of ten he'll still eat the pizza. You are the most boring, unfun, fuddy duddy motherfucker on the planet. You, you'll come down like in the seven seven in the morning to me like, oh, okay, you're working out and you're having a screwdriver. What's wrong with you? I don't think I ever said that. Andrew scrutinized you for early morning drinking. I didn't. No, I was. I, I was to, just surprised. I wasn't judging you. I I just didn't think that you would start that early. Yeah, I, throughout all of college, I pretty much started my morning with cereal and Fireball. Well, no, actually, no, actually, I'm. Uh, that wasn't the issue. The issue I had was doing a workout while drinking because I thought that that would be a bad okay. Yeah, mix. yeah all right. So you hear the judgment in his voice, Daniel. Hey, all I know is I wouldn't want to work out drunk. That sounds miserable to me. That sounds like judgment to me. Cereal and Fireball sounds like the next step in fucking uh, which fucking Kardashian step. Remember <laughs> she was saying that she'd never tried milk and cereal? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, why yeah. the fuck did that tweet blow up? Like, oh my god. Like, you know how out of touch they all are. I mean, we already knew that, but it's nice to be reminded. Oh, uh, by the way, Andrew, Mr. Yeah. Judgy, Mr. Big Boy Pants, or Mr. I Don't Drink name. at yes. 6 a.m. Correct. I blew your max out of the water. Yeah, that's true. You are naturally <laughs> stronger than I am. <laughs> so maybe you should drink. <laughs> you know, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead. I'll look into that. I'll do some research. Maybe you're on to something. But I, I just do not foresee myself getting plastered before every workout. <laughs> You'll never achieve godhood, me- godhood mucus farts with that attitude. I, you were I gonna remember say myself. I, I, re- I remember myself being all tipsy and stumbling all over Charlie's house and him being, this isn't fair. Charlie, I thought you were <laughs> going to say, strong. I thought you were going to say Godhood meat, man. Like, like that's the level of workout we're doing. Oh, we're getting there. <laughs> we are. Well, Charlie was getting upset at me. Charlie's upset of everything, though. What? Yeah, you heard that. He's so upset because the episode has to end. It's about, oh, uh, oh, yeah. it's about that time that we wrap things up, boys. All right, take it away, Andrew. Okay, well, thank you so much to Mr. Sloss, who you'll be seeing in Avengers Infinity War Part 2, his cameo. What a fucking wish. As Spider-Man's arch nemesis <laughs> coming on the show. <laughs> uh, Daniel, now would be a fantastically great time for you to plug anything that you want, new projects, social media, literally just tell everyone why Netflix you're alive. specials, perhaps? I've got this. Uh, I got two new Netflix specials uh, out, uh, streaming worldwide. Also, if you want to spit your dad's cum into a vial and <laughs> send it to me, I will. Uh, I'll. I'll. I'll, t- I'll tell you how promiscuous he is. <laughs> Great. The, for, the forensics expert, Mr. Sloss. He's take, he's taking the business from Twenty Three and Me now. We're gonna include. Uh, your plan. Let them know they got a new competitor. We're gonna include <laughs> Daniel Sloss's home address in the description if you want to take him up on that. <laughs> so Daniel, we're gonna need that after the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh Jackson, <laughs> you always do the the end credits, so yeah. do it. Thank you everyone for watching this week's episode of the official podcast. You can help us out if you want by heading on over to patreon.com slash the official podcast. Wait a There's minute. Bonus episodes and everything there. No, is, you wait. Isn't a there some sort of a chat room they get to be a part of if they go to Patreon, Jackson? Yeah, we we have a, a chat room Discord set up where you can talk to a lot of other people, us included, there. A so lot of cool. other patrons, you mean? Yeah, patrons over at, uh, what is it? The official podcast.com slash Patreon or the other way no, around. Patreon.com slash the official podcast. Yes. So head, head on over there. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning Goodbye. in, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye.